Harvard Medical School aspires to rethink and reorganize its entire approach to therapeutic discovery. And this involves a number of different dimensions. The initial and most well formulated is the initiative in systems pharmacology. One of the goals of our initiative is to work out how to connect all of those pieces in a chain from the earliest drug discovery right up to the post-marketing surveillance of drugs. Couple those together both with better experimental methods and better modeling tools and we think that's one of the major ways we'll go about reducing the failure that afflicts current discovery and drives the cost of drugs. Our link center, the Harvard Medical School Center, focused mainly on the proteomic side and what we're doing is we're taking a number of different cell lines as many as we can. We treat them with a number of different perturbations. Uh, we, we somehow challenge them with something and then we try to measure as many things as we can. The cell lines I've been working with is a set of about 50 different cell lines that have been breast cancer cell lines that have been collected uh, by the HCC and distributed to a number of different labs essentially to make sure that if people work on the same cell lines that they're actually working with the same isolate so that the data is more comparable and easier to integrate with each other. For our project, we're focusing mainly on kinases, kinase inhibitors, and uh, cytokines and growth factors that activate kinases. And the reason why is that we have the idea that most uh, targeted therapeutics are targeting either growth factor receptors, the interaction between ligands and growth factors, or the downstream kinases uh, that the growth factors signal, signal through. Ultimately, this can lead to figuring out what things one might want to measure in a cell, ultimately in a patient, to help us predict or, or tell us which drug these patients should be treated with. So this is another way of, of trying to get towards a more personalized approach in medicine, finding biomarkers that help us uh, pick out drugs that we should choose uh, in order for treatment. The pathway that I'm interested in, PI3 kinase, has been implicated in a number of different cancers and uh, the pharmaceutical industry has made a number of molecules that target different nodes in the signaling network. But I think one of the hurdles today is understanding which node to target with which pharmaceutical and what the biological rationale would, for that would be. And that's um, related to the work we're doing here in the lab. As a physician, um, we frequently use drugs off the shelf and we treat patients as black boxes. Everyone gets pretty much the same dose and we never quite know when drugs actually work and when they will fail. With the research that's being performed in our laboratory, we hope to be more cognizant down the line of what works and when drugs fail so we can give the right medicines at the right doses to the right patients. One example are taxanes. Taxol in particular has been given to over a million patients as, an, as a chemotherapeutic agent all over the world. Up to, to date, we do not understand exactly how this drug actually works. Our laboratory uses primarily intravital imaging approaches where we use fluorescently labeled drugs or surrogates of drugs. Uh, to understand how they distribute in the body, whether they actually reach their targets, the cells of interest, and um, we use genetically engineered mouse models and other model systems to understand when these drugs actually fail. The beauty of the experiment is we can actually see the cells responding. So on day one they're growing happily, on day three they start looking a little weird but they're still not dying and then by about day six or seven, we can see individual cancer cells start to die. So we can really see the drug doing its thing and we can infer some of the molecular mechanisms. And it's, it's a really uh, amazing opportunity for my lab. Collaboration is essential in, to tackle these research questions. And our laboratory has been very fortunate to collaborate uh, with Peter Sorge's lab and Tim Mitchison's lab um, as we bring completely complementary um, expertise um, to the table. There are no other institutions that have pulled from such a broad set of resources and we're very proud to be doing this here at Harvard. We think it's the only way to actually change how clinical development is done. Our species survival uh, depends upon us making more progress with the amazing amount of information that we've gathered over the last 20 and 50 years in, in biology. And we do believe and we hope that with information that we are gathering today that we can make major changes in, uh, in human health.